Ladies and gentlemen, Tatiko Vance here, and welcome to a news update. Now today we've got some really good news. I don't know if you remember a little while ago I was talking about a game changer. Now it turns out that game changer is called the Pioneer. Now the Pioneer is a base building colony sort of ship where it can sort of land on planets and deploy modules. We've seen a few images of how it sort of works you can see in the background here now we're no doubt going to get more information on this over the coming weeks now it is priced quite high this one it's over 700 it is quite expensive the size of the ship is very very big now what i like about this ship this introduces a massive amount of gameplay now when originally star citizen used the word game changer a part of me did feel like they were baiting us along and it was going to be a cargo hauler or something quite basic the fact that it's actually a base building i think it is fair to say that it is a game changer undoubtedly now if you think of the sort of gameplay that this can introduce it introduces firstly the ability to create more assets on a planet so when someone's exploring or on a planet they're more than likely going to have uh, player interaction or find buildings that could also be player driven as well which i think is really really good and i think that's one of the key things here the challenge for Star Citizen is making these planets feel like they're lived in and they're real. And there needs to be quite a bit of content on these planets. Otherwise, it's going to get a little bit boring because you're going to be going around the planet. There's going to be nothing there. So adding a ship that has the ability to place assets on a planet just seems like a good idea to me. Now on the concept sale page for this ship, it does come with a couple other things as well. It says that it comes with some construction material and also a UEE claim license. Now the claim license one here has been the interesting one because all of a sudden now everyone's thinking we can actually own land and I think that actually is the case to some extent. It's going to be clearly in UEE space and I believe that the UEE will defend that claim to some extent as well. I don't know if they're going to be flying around the claim or are they going to be just flying in when it comes under attack. Now I'm guessing this doesn't mean that you can place your outpost on a planet that is outside the UEE but obviously that will bring different challenges for you undoubtedly. Sort of makes logical sense for Star Citizen to do this because they've been working hard on the planetary tech. It's sort of like a modular system where you place it on the planet and so on. I'm sure someone looked at that and thought hang on a minute we could probably just drop this in the ship. So I don't think it was actually a considerable amount of development to get to this point. Clearly on the basis that the planetary tech has evolved quite well over the period of the months. Avocates are testing 3.0. There is a burn down for that. I did actually think the other day they did a burn down for 3.0. They're doing a burn down for the Avocati. And then I'm guessing they're doing a burn down for PTU. And then they're doing a burn down for 3.1. Does it carry on going? Sounds like Star Citizen is going to be constantly burning down. Uh, I'm not quite sure where they're going with this burn down idea. Star Citizen have been refreshing their content as well. They're delivering to new members and also us as well. The people have been back in the game for a while. One of the ones that they've updated is the glossary of ship sizes. The first one is vehicles. Vehicles being ground vehicles. Now these can consist of a single player or also a small group of people. Snub fighters will generally work in space and atmosphere. Generally they are single seaters and the majority of the time they have no quantum drive as well. Moving on to small ships. Small ships being 25 meters in length. Now these ships will operate clearly in space and atmosphere. Majority of the time they have quantum capability. Ideal for a solo player or you could also take your friends with you as well. Moving on to the medium sized ships and that's anywhere between 25 and 50 meters in length. Can be operated independently. Now these could also have living accommodation for the crew and this will normally support longer missions and also have a larger cargo area. Designed once again I would say for a single player or a small group. Moving on to the larger ships and they're classing this as 50 to 150 in length. Now these can be operated with a small crew but it clearly will benefit from having real players on board. The next one is a capital sized ship and that's 150 in length. Now this takes a significant investment from a crew point of view. 
This is moving up to organization or larger group. I should imagine playing on your own on this is going to be pretty difficult, but I've no doubt there's going to be people out there soloing it, maybe with loads of AI, you never know. So it's nice to have a little bit of categorization on the sizing, and maybe this is their way by tiering ships, I don't know, or different size. Also, they do go over some of the terminologies they use as well, like cargo capacity, obviously we know what that means. SCM and AFB, that's basically the speed the ship moves in standard combat maneuver. And AFB being the afterburner. Then we've got min-max crew, which is obviously minimum maximum crew. This is the way that a ship is classed, so you could have minimum as four, max of eight. So that means you need a minimum really of four to crew it. This is going to make it a lot easier for all of us when we look at the ship's stats page and we can see this information. It gives a better understanding what we're buying and what's its capability from a minimum and maximum player point of view. And I think that's really important. We've also had some updated information on the careers and roles. Starting with combat, it's quite clear what that is really guys, uh, shooting stuff. Transportation, it's pretty straightforward, so that could be something like the hull E and so on. Exploration, that's pretty self-explanatory really. And industry, which covers off mining, salvage, science, and also will probably cover off the game changer as well. We have support, that includes medical repair and refueling. And then the final one, we've got competition, and that includes racing. There's only one at the moment. It does seem quite small, but I've no doubt that they're probably going to add more to the competition later on down the line. And finally, I'll leave a couple of links in the description as well, which takes you over to some posts that Star Citizen have been making over the past few weeks on the shipyard. I think it's a good move. It's basically creating documentation, i.e. sort of one pages, summarizing star citizen i.e. ships roles what you can do in game and i think it's a really good idea it's going to be really good for new people coming into the game so they can just go and read that and that would give them a really really good summary what star citizen is and what you can actually do inside of star citizen when it goes live ladies and gentlemen that's everything for me today thanks for listening and don't forget to subscribe bye now